Hey guys, it's Olivia here from Olivia's Catastrophe and today I'm coming at you with my October wrap up where I tell you about all the books that I read last month. So last month I did post a TBR and I did join in with some readathons so I'll have all the information and what books I read for what prompts down below. I didn't complete any of the readathons because October was truly a busy month for me. I did quite a lot of travelling. I also had a lot of final assignments as term finished up this month and I just, my mood was everywhere and I was kind of just reading a whole bunch of random things entirely based on my mood. But either which way I managed to read 18 different things and I'm here to talk about all of them. So one thing that I finished reading was Throne of Glass by Sarah J Maas and this is the mini editions which are coming out and they were sent to me by the lovely Bloomsbury Australia so thank you very much for this. I buddy read this with Margaret from The Word Nerd and I was expecting to hate this and it was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. So this one follows Selena, she is an assassin who is in a slave prison and she gets chosen to join in this competition where she can fight to become the king's main assassin. However, while all of this is going on, some of the competitors are getting murdered and Selena is trying to figure out who has done this and why before she ends up being one of the victims as well. So what I liked about this book was the, the romance, like it wasn't the best romance, but I was kind of reading this like it was a fan fiction instead of a novel, so I was kind of judging it that way. And if we're putting it on like a fan fiction list, even though it is a novel, I wouldn't say it's the best, but I wouldn't say it's the worst either. The writing style is actually okay, and Selena is a decent character. While there are some unrealistic things that happen in this book, and while the fantasy elements are not properly explained at all, Hopefully that will get better in the rest of the series. I did think it was a lot of fun. The world seems interesting. I'm looking forward to hearing more about it. It was a good start off to the series. I am Team Kale as of now. Kale? Kyle. I don't know how you pronounce that. But I am on his team so far and I feel like Dorian is a bit of a like weakling who kind of does nothing. <laughs> but um, yeah. I was a little bit invested in the romance. I have to say I was very disappointed because the competition, like, it sounded like it was going to be full of action. It sounded like it was going to be very difficult, but then the competition was really not that included. And rather it was focused on the murder mystery, which again, wasn't really the most interesting or the best done. And then also the villain is a bit weak. So while there are a lot of things I didn't like about this book, it wasn't as bad as I was expecting and it was intriguing enough for me to continue on and read the next one. Then I read The Poppy War by R.F. Quang and I buddy read this with someone on Twitter and I'll leave a link to her Twitter down below. Sorry if I forgot everybody's names, I didn't really take notes of things <laughs> and I know like Twitter handles rather than names. But yeah, I buddy read this one with her and I thought The Poppy War was just okay. So this follows Rin and she's from a very very poor background, she's an orphan, her family don't really want her. So she takes this very difficult test and gets put into this soldier school and while she's training she comes across some very interesting people and then a whole war kind of begins and she's caught up in the middle of it and powers and magic is involved and she has access to this really interesting power that is very rare and very unheard of. So how can I talk about this book? This book is kind of split into two sides, two parts that are very very different from each other but are in the same book. So in the first one it's kind of your stereotypical fantasy where this girl gets into this magical boarding school and this soldier boarding school and she's having problems with a certain student, she's kind of learning a bit about magic and about the world and she's just kind of doing all the motions that literally every fantasy novel ever has done and it's very predictable and a little bit draggy and boring because you already know what's going to happen in all of these things but then you get to the second part which goes into the war aspect and the magic aspect a lot more and it really makes the character relationships and the character developments super complex and interesting and that is when you get an unpredictable really suspenseful and really amazing second part to the book. So I was really in two minds when I was reading this because the first part I was really struggling and I was almost thinking about DNFing it, which is a big deal because I rarely DNF. But then the second half I was invested, I was enjoying it. Overall I just feel like the beginning half could have been trimmed down a lot. This book could have been trimmed down quite a bit and it was just a bit draggy in some places. But other than that it was a decent read. It was good enough for me to want to read the sequel. Also I'll leave trigger warnings for everything down below because trust me the poppy war comes with a lot of trigger warnings. One thing about this fantasy book that is unlike all the others is that it is gory and it doesn't hide 
from telling you all of the details. Okay, so the next book I listened to was Sadie by Courtney Summers and I listened to this on audiobook and again, it was a really hyped book and I thought it was just okay. So Sadie is a girl who is an older sister, she has a stutter and her younger sister was murdered and Sadie thinks she knows who's done it and she's going to find that murderer and kill him. Audiobook is definitely the best way to go around this one because there is a podcast in the book and you kind of get to hear the podcast music and it seems very interactive and feels like you're listening to a podcast which is really good. What I liked about this book was that it's such a unique premise. I loved that we had a main character with a stutter and that her stutter prevails all the way through the book. It doesn't just go away and I felt like Sadie was a very interesting character and what she was trying to do and everything and how she really wanted to be seen as a strong woman. However, I do feel like I was a bit disconnected from the story. I felt like it was a bit straightforward. I didn't really feel like there was any like plot twist or anything unique that was going to like jump out of me and surprise me. So I could really see this book was mostly following a linear line. Yes, we did get to hear about their past and the family dynamic, but I just wasn't connected to the characters enough to really feel anything. So while it was a good story for me, it just wasn't like amazing or anything and it kind of had an ending that I found a little bit disappointing, so it was just alright. Then I reread The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins and I reread this for uni class and I really liked it. I just was a bit shocked that I feel like The Hunger Games is actually the fake dating trope and I remember the first time I read it I was a little bit underwhelmed because I had a lot of trouble connecting to Katniss's character because she's so um, like closed off and holds herself so tight but when I was reading this one, rereading it actually, I just found out that the world building is so intense and so well done which was my favourite thing the first time round but I just realised with the book rereading it that there's so many details that the film missed and it's just really amazing. So the world building is practically fantastic, the plot is really really good and it's so layered, like studying it was so interesting. The writing was just okay, there were some points when the writing was a little bit cringe admittedly. The writing was okay, Katniss was an okay character, I'm still very strongly team Gale, but it was it was a very good reread. I didn't tell you what this one was about, I'm assuming you know, it's set in this dystopian world where these children have to go to fight to death in a Hunger Games arena and it's got some spectacularization where everybody's like watching these games and having their own expectations but Katniss is just trying to survive and she takes the place of her younger sister. Yeah, that's pretty much what this one is about. Then I read The Sun is Also a Star and again this was a buddy read with Anne on Twitter so I'll leave a link to her Twitter down below. The Sun is Also a Star is set in the space of a single day so Natasha is going to be deported back to Jamaica and this is her last day in America and she's trying very hard to stay and then we've also got this Korean American boy who I can't recall his name right now who is going through an interview for a path of life that he's not very interested in and they kind of have their paths cross and meet and they fall in love in this single day. So you know, you know you're going to get some insta-love because that's just literally what the book is telling you, the synopsis. So I'm not going to judge this based on insta-love because you know that going in. I did like it. I didn't like it. It was a bit mixed again. I felt like a lot of things were shoehorned in, like she was shoehorning in themes that necessarily didn't really need to be there. But I did like the main theme of how all these little decisions and choices that you make do add up. I did think the romance was cute, I liked the male character a lot, I think he was funny, I think he was entertaining, I think he was really sweet. Natasha on the other hand, I wasn't that about her, she seemed a bit closed off and a bit mean and a bit hard to reach at some points. Yes, she does warm up to things and again, personally, I don't find it the most realistic love story but I did like the themes of culture and some of the discussions that went on. It was just overall a quick and okay read. Then for class I reread Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone by J.K. Rowling and I'm not going to spend much time on this, I'm not even going to give a synopsis because you know what this book is about. And if you're new to this channel, hi, I'm Olivia Savannah and I don't really like the Harry Potter series, in fact I mostly hate it. So rereading it was not the most fun, it takes so long for Harry Potter to get to Hogwarts, I totally forgot about that. And also Hermione in this one is like a really weak character. I didn't expect that. I can't even remember reading the first one, even though I finished the series this year. That is how much I've buried the Harry Potter series, but we'll just move swiftly along. Didn't really enjoy it, but I feel like it's still one of the best ones in the series. Next, I buddy read My Sister, The Serial Killer by Oyinkan Braithwaite. I feel like I mispronounced that. I'm so sorry. I buddy read this one with Anne from Book Your Imagination, and this one is a thriller that follows these two sisters who live 
in Lagos and one of them is a serial killer and the other one is the sister who we get the perspective of and she's trying to live with it. Her sister tends to kill all the people that she dates and she starts dating the guy that the sister has a crush on. I feel like this book was really really good actually. It was very very readable, it was so quick to just fly through and quite addicting and while nothing much happens, a lot happens. It's very it's plot driven but at the same time it's quite character driven. I feel like it's such a good balance between those two things and I really liked the characters. I really liked all the layers of like sibling rivalry but sibling love but they had a very complex past and then feminism and how females are viewed in the society in Lagos at the moment. It was just so very interesting and I also felt like the murder side of things was also interesting and in how they kind of got away with things and whether they were going to get caught or not or whether she was going to turn her sister in or not. It was so interesting and the story was actually quite layered. I feel like you could read this one and read it superficially and go through it very quickly and not like soak in all the details that are hidden deep beneath but if you take a time to think about everything and see all the deeper lines I feel like this is a really good thriller. Then I read some graphic novels and we start to get some of my five star reads. So I read Saga Volume 1 by Brian Vaughan and Fiona Staples and I absolutely loved it. I can't believe I didn't read it until now. I gave this one five stars and it follows these two aliens who live on a planet that are warring each other but this couple are kind of having a forbidden love romance where they fall in love, get married and they have a child together and because this child is stands for everything the war is not about. There are people who are hunting them to kill the child and also to kill them for betraying each of their, you know, war efforts. It was so good. So it kind of is, you know, science fiction-y. It's got the narration of the baby, which doesn't really come in that much, to be honest. Like, who really cares? It doesn't really change much about the story. It's got some humour in it. It's got some action in it. You've got them trying to fight and discuss about war and whether it's worth it or not or whether we're just not seeing each other very clearly and then you've got these two characters who are from different cultures trying to make a relationship work it's just really cute really funny and also just it's really good and I read Nimona by Noelle Stevenson and guys you should have yelled at me to read this book sooner. This was also another five star read for me. So this one is a graphic novel which is quite thick and it follows this villain who gets this sidekick who is a shapeshifter and he didn't really ask for her to turn up but she does and she seems to be more evil than him because he has been fighting you know his best friend or ex-best friend who we should say is the hero and he's not the main character we're following the villain's point of view guys and they've been fighting each other for ages and they kind of have these rules to their fight that they tend to follow which is hilarious because that's how it goes in literally every movie and every series but she's mixing things up she's truly evil and she really wants to cause destru destruction but at the same time the villain is trying to find out where she came from, why she can shapeshift the way she can and do all the things that she can do and also they kind of start to form a friendship. It was just so good. I feel like I should compare this to Despicable Me in terms of like villain storyline arc but it was really it was really funny, it was really fun and it really discussed morals. We've got grey characters shining everywhere and I'm all about that. Then I read Paper Girls Volume 5 and this is by Brian for Gordon. Paper Girls follows these girls who kind of end up time travelling and they want to return back to their time but they get sucked into this like time travel war that's happening and it's all really random and really disjointed and very chaotic and I don't tend to love it but I keep reading it because I am weak and addicted somehow. So this one it makes more sense, it's more linear-ish. I can understand what's going on it's okay. I don't love it. I don't hate it. I don't think the romance that happened in this volume in particular was very believable. It felt a bit sudden and everything. But yeah, it's just what I read to pass the time. Then I read Umbrella Academy Volume 1 and this is by Joe Way and Gabrielle Barr and I did not know that it's by the singer of My Chemical Romance. But yeah, I read this one because I wanted to read it before trying the series and it follows these children who have powers. I don't really know how to explain it further than that. Yeah. I read the volume and I didn't like it. I was so confused. Nothing made sense. And I really hope 
that this series is more sensical than this. That's all I have to say. I was very, very confused. And then to wrap up my graphic novels, I read Monstrous Volume 3 by Marjorie Liu and Sana Takeda, and this was a fantastic volume in this series. I love the Monstrous series so, so, so much. So we're following our main character. She is a one-armed fierce woman who is trying to find out more about what happened with her mother but she's also finding these pieces of a mask which has powers and she's got this monstrous this monster living inside of her who has his own agenda and kind of just wants to eat everyone around him so she's kind of struggling with that inner demon as well and we've got some really amazing side characters who have completely stolen my heart and kind of have their own storyline starting to form in this one too. I find it really hard to describe Monstrous and what's going on because it's quite political, personal, but then actiony as well. The artwork is absolutely stunning, my favourite artwork in any graphic novel, and it's just becoming better and better with every volume. Definitely try this series out. Then I read Some Places More Than Others by Renee Watson, and I gave this one five stars. So this is a diverse own voices middle grade read, and we follow this young girl who is in a family with her mum and dad and her mum is pregnant so she's about to have a younger sibling. She wants to go to New York and find out about her dad's side of the family. However, she does get to go but when she goes she realises that her dad has not talked to his dad, her grandfather, for the 12 years that she has been alive and it's about why that is and kind of reconciling things. This book was literally the book that I should have had when I was younger and would have loved when I was younger but it just came out now, so I hope all these lovely black women who are growing up get to enjoy reading this book because it has so many important themes, themes of family, themes of forgiveness, themes of gender and how hobbies are not gendered. There's not female hobbies, there's not male hobbies, and I didn't expect that to be there. And it's such a brilliant celebration of blackness, of black history, of black culture, of some black femininity issues and discussions that come up and it was just, it was just amazing. I wish I had this when I was younger. Younger me would have devoured this. Then for class I read Tales from Outer Suburbia and this is a short story collection by Sean Tan but it's also very illustrated and the illustrations are a very big part of it. I thought this one was okay. I did like some of the stories, some more than others. I feel like that tends to happen quite often with a short story collection. The illustrations and the colour palette were beautiful and really tied in well with the stories. And I did like some of the themes, but sometimes I felt like the stories were just a bit too short or stopped a bit too abruptly, or I just wasn't quite sure what I was supposed to take away from them. So yeah, a good collection, some good ones, some just okay ones, no bad ones though. Then we're gonna move on to the poetry collection I read this month, and that was The Woman and the Men by Nikki Giovanni. Nikki Giovanni is a black classic poet, and The Woman and the Men was a bit of a mixed read for me. So the poems about the woman were absolutely fantastic. They dealt with black female themes, they dealt with you know the stereotypes that women had back in the day like they had to be in the kitchen, they had to be the mother, they had to do all of this and I was kind of debunking that and saying like it doesn't have to be that way, you just do you and I was very much appreciative of that. But then the men's section was all these like really cringe love poems and it was just so not up to par with the first part that I was very very disappointed and then lastly it kind of went into a bit was about some places which is just about you know kind of random things about places and they were decent but it kind of didn't make up for the terribleness of the men part and didn't compare to the wonderfulness of the woman part so it was kind of a bit of a mixed read for me. I continued on to read Spin Softly, A Black Song by Nikki Giovanni, which I got thinking it was poetry, but actually it's a picture book with some lovely illustrations of black people in it and some very quick, short, you know, poems for children about being black and black culture, and it was just fine. It wasn't the best poetry. It wasn't the worst poetry. I've seen better children's poetry before, so I just thought it was okay. On the theme of picture books, I read A Guinea Pig's Nutcracker, and this was also sent to me by Bloomsbury for a review, and it's a picture... <laughs> Sorry. Um, it's a picture book retelling of the Nutcracker, but guinea pigs play the roles of the stories and it's actually, 
it's so cute it was really really cute and adorable and i loved the photo shoots with the guinea pigs playing the roles and how they simplified down the story i love retellings like this where they're very short and sweet i think i read like some Shakespeare ones like this as well and I just find them very cute so that was a sweet quick read and last but not least I read How to Belong with the Billionaire by Alexis Hall this was my new adult romance read this month I only read one because I was doing assignments and I tend to stay up all night and finish a romance in one day so I didn't want to read many of those otherwise I wouldn't get my assignments done <sighs> guys my five star predictions are not doing very well because this was a bit disappointing. It was still a three star read, so definitely middle of the road, but it was just not what I wanted for the conclusion of a series that I absolutely loved. So How to Belong with a Billionaire by Alexis Hall. The first book follows Arden St. Ives and he's a university student who's just graduating. He's not quite sure what he wants out of life, but he meets this billionaire called Caspian and they start to have this romance. However, Caspian is I don't know how to explain Caspian. He's got a lot of hang-ups because of his past and what he's been through. He's also quite into BDSM, but he thinks it's a bad thing and he's trying to hold himself back from it. And he has a sister called Ellery who is struggling a lot with mental health. How to Belong with a Billionaire kind of goes into a lot of things. It focuses a lot on friendships. I loved seeing Arden with Ellery and kind of cementing that friendship and seeing how that dynamic worked. We've also got Nick and Nick really 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 needs Arden in this book and a lot of the things that Nick is going through in this book I feel like were very accurate to what my younger sister went through and was feeling when she, I don't want to spoil anything, when she was going through a period in her life too and we were kind of doing it with her and Arden's feelings and Nick's feelings like Arden's feelings connected to mine at the time and I feel like Nick's feelings connected to my younger sisters can't exactly speak for that because I am not my younger sister but from what I could tell it seems to be quite an accurate representation of that and then we've also got Arden and Caspian's romantic relationship it ended where I wanted it to end but for a lot of this book Arden and Caspian aren't the main focus and I wanted Arden, Arden and Caspian to be the focus because that is the couple that I'm invested in seeing and as well as that we do have a lot of representation we do have George who comes into this Georgie George Georgie George I don't really know but yeah she's in this one and I didn't really lots of people loved her when I saw her in reviews but I didn't really care about her that much which was a bit of a problem because she features a lot in this book, a lot more than I was interested in reading about or wanting to see, but okay. I will mention some of the representation in this book because this book is quite diverse and has quite a lot in it. So we've got Arden, who is Pan. We've got Caspian, who is gay. We've got George or Georgie, not entirely sure. And she is a trans woman. And we've got a wheelchair user. And we've also got Briefly, a brief appearance of either a non-binary or a gender fluid character. I cannot tell from what was included, but that's all the representation, which is quite a lot. And I also want to say that this book does have some cheating in it, which is not a trope I love to read about. So that was a bit disappointing. Yeah. Anyway, that's it. Those are all the books that I read in the month of October. I'm hoping November will be a bit more of a concise and controlled reading month for me, where I can read what I've been intending to read rather than picking up the most random things across my bookshelves but yeah that is that please let me know in the comment section down below what was your favorite or least favorite read in the month of october and have you read any of the books that i mentioned here please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching it hit the subscribe button if you want to see more and don't forget to hit that notification bell to be updated every time i have a new video and i'll see you in the next one goodbye